Good evening and welcome to the English News Bulletin. I trust you've had a pleasant day. Happy Saturday to all our viewers. Let's kick off tonight's bulletin with the latest headlines. On Saturday, His Excellency Paul Kagame arrived in Doha, Qatar for a state visit. Youth in the northern province have vowed to protect the unity of the country moving into the future by resisting any who may seek to sow the seeds of division among them, and they have also denounced genocidal ideologies. Glad to have your company tonight. My name is Olive Nete. Now to the news in details. We'll start by informing you that His Excellency Paul Kagame on Saturday has arrived in Doha, Qatar for a state visit. In the afternoon in Doha, President Kagame met with His Highness Sheikh Tamim Ibn Hamad Al Thani, Amir of the State of Qatar, and discussed productive and mutually beneficial bilateral cooperation in key sectors, including infrastructure and hospitality. They also exchanged ideas on current global issues. Moving ahead, the First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, is in Namibia, where she has expressed her condolences to Her Excellency Monica Gengos and her family following the death of President Haig Gengob. Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame wrote in the visitor's book before meeting Her Excellency Monica Gengos and personally expressing her condolences. President Haig Gengob passed away of cancer on Sunday. He was president of Namibia since 2015 and was serving his second term in office. His funeral will be held on the 24th of this month of February. Two other matters, the Minister of Local Government has again reminded local residents who were resettled in different model villages across the country that they have a responsibility to try and overcome some of the challenges they face instead of always expecting the government to do it on their behalf. In one such settlement of Nyamagabe district, one of the southern province, residents say that in the four years they have lived in the model village, they have never had electricity from the national grid and homes with solar power often struggle to maintain the equipment they need for lighting others in Nyaruguru district say they find it difficult to get markets for their pork and to be able to afford cooking gas. These and other issues were addressed by the minister who reiterated that the government is ready to intervene when necessary, but that the local residents must first make the effort to address some of the problems before seeking help. Minister Jean-Claude Musabdimana met and held a meeting with the local residents as part of his two-day visit to the southern province of the country. To more news, youth in the northern province have vowed to protect the unity of the country moving into the future by resisting any who may seek to sow the seeds of division among them. They have also denounced genocidal ideologies. As many as 500 youth representatives from all districts of the province gathered for discussions in preparations for the 30th commemoration of the genocide that was perpetrated against the Tutsi here in Rwanda back in 1994. This is part of a broader drive to encourage a young in the country to learn the truth about the history of Rwanda and different speakers at the event who included the Minister of National Unity and Civic Engagement urged the young people to be a voice of truth to, in, to counteract those who try to distort the history of what happened. The youth also visited the Musan, the genocide, genocide memorial site, the final resting place of more than 800 Tutsi who were killed at what used to be Cour d'Appel de Rouhendiri, where they had been taken and promised that they would be safe. The young men and women planted a tree to signify security. The country now has promising that they will play their part to ensure that genocide is never allowed to happen again here in Rwanda. Now to more news political matters. Political analysts in the Great Lakes region have noted that the insecurity in the Eastern DRC has been allowed to continue because certain countries are benefiting from it. This, as worries grow, the problem there would escalate into a wider regional conflict. Serge Nore with the details. It's now been more than a year since the United Nations Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide to the UN Secretary General warned that there is evidence that genocide is being committed against Kenya Rwanda speaking Congolese in the Eastern DRC, most of them belonging to the Tutsi tribe, yet nothing has been done to stop the atrocities. 
The world has become dirty and corruption is rife. I believe those Tutsi being killed in the eastern DRC are not valued because they have no precious minerals, no oil reserves to dig up, which is why no one cares what happens to them. You will not see an announcement denouncing those atrocities. Were such interests present, they would denounce them. But they keep quiet because they have a role they are playing in what is happening there. They are quiet because if they were to denounce it, they would be among those held accountable. Unfortunately, the government of the DRC has continued to support the FDLR terrorist group in its own country, made up of genocide perpetrators who committed unspeakable atrocities here in Rwanda back in 1994 during the genocide against the Tutsi, the fastest genocide in recorded human history. And some countries in the region have not restrained from making provocative statements against their neighbors. Uh, what I can call an axis of evil between President Daishimi and President Chisekedi is meant to disrupt what other countries have achieved in the region when it comes to security. Their statements are always the same, as if they first consult each other on what to say, even when the statements are made at different times. It is obvious that their intentions are geared towards causing insecurity in the region. All of this has political analysts and others worried as to what it could result in, urging for a solution before it is too late. Sadly, world leaders are acting as if they have learned nothing from the past, most especially the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Now to health matters, some people visiting hospitals and clinics in the city of Kigali report being burdened by prescriptions for necessary medications from their doctors. However, upon reaching commercial pharmacies, they discover that these medications are no longer available. They perceive this situation as a threat to their lives and the RSSP confirms that an investigation has been initiated on the matter. We have more on this story. Those most frequently encountering this issue are individuals with chronic illnesses and non-communicable diseases. Many of them report that despite being prescribed the necessary medications, they are unable to find them at various pharmacies across Kigali. I am suffering from the pancreas and spleen cancer, and it is hard to find the painkiller morphine nowadays. I went to two pharmacies and couldn't find the medicines. Regarding the shortage of essential drugs for patients, pharmacy dealers attribute some of the reasons for this problem to the appreciation of the dollar on the market. Despite this challenge, they are obligated to continue selling the drugs at prices dictated by the tariff. The tariff we are currently using was published in December and it is used for six months. And when you take a look back then in December, a dollar was converting at 1,200 Rwandan francs, but currently it is at 1,300 Rwandan francs. And this means that if at that time the drug was bought at 1,700 Rwandan francs, you understand that currently the price is higher. But when you consider the constant tariff, the pharmacy starts selling at lower prices. And then what we do, we stop selling the specific drug to avoid losses. And then you find that the doctors keep prescribing that drug, and yet they are not aware of what is happening on the market. And what we do is to give you a drug that is similar to that that can help you. That is why we are requesting insurance companies to sit and revise how to establish prices for drugs depending on the situation on the market, and also draft a tariff that can be used in a short time of period. According to Dr. Regis Hitimana, the Chief Benefits Officer at the Rwanda Social Security Board, points out that in addressing this current issue, they are working with the Rwanda FDA. We request that if there are certain big changes to the market, they should let us know beforehand, and then we can see what we can change. But other than small changes of five, 15 or 20 percent, they are bearable because they are considered in the 40 percent that we provide to them. Big changes that may happen may be communicated earlier instead of refusing to provide drugs to patients in need. But we will continue to use the same method until the Rwanda FDA decides to change the way we usually operate. Some of the missing drugs in pharmacies buy say that sometimes they go to buy them and they are told they won't be given when they use their insurance, but they are asked to pay 100% of the cost. 
Pharmacy owners justify this practice by citing the discrepancy between the tariff set by the RSSP, which they are mandated to adhere to when selling drugs, and the higher purchase prices they incur. Still on health matters, welcome to today's health segment where we will delve into the world of neglected tropical diseases and their causes. Joining us today is Jean Bosco Mbonigaba, the acting director of neglected tropical diseases and other parasitic disease control at unit at the Rwanda Biomedical Center. Welcome to our studio, Mr. Mbonigaba. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you. Uh, speaking of neglected diseases, uh, can you start by briefly telling us what are neglected tropical diseases and why are they considered neglected? Thank you very much for that good question. This is normally when you hear this, this word neglected, you may, you may understand that there are diseases that are neglected. Therefore, people are afraid about this disease neglected, which is not the case. This normally uh, got this name because of the history. Many some diseases were paid much attention to compared to others. This included the three big diseases, mainly HIV, uh, TB, and malaria. They are well found, uh, many research around those diseases and the different initiatives around those diseases. Then WHO, the International Organization in Charge of Health, uh, look, uh, tried to put other diseases that were neglected in some how in research, in the capacity, in the funding, in the community awareness, try to put them into one group. And now we, are, we have 21 diseases under that umbrella of neglect of diseases, just to advocate, to make more awareness and more efforts so that we can also pay attention to them mm -hmm. and net them and alleviate sufferings of those diseases to those affected. Mm. Mm. So what factors contribute to their prevalence in a certain area? Yeah, mainly, uh, as they are different, you know, 21 diseases are quite different in terms of transmission of the disease, in terms of symptoms, in terms of prevalence, different things that are really uh, differentiating those diseases. Uh, and mainly, when you look at, at Rwanda, at, in our country, we have the most common ones. And from them, we can now have uh, specificities around their transmission, uh, and even how to prevent those diseases. Mm. And here we can probably say intestinal worms. Mm. Most of the NTDs are uh, transmitted through poor hygiene, sanitation, and the poor quality of water. And uh, those are mainly including intestinal worms. We have uh, schizomiasis, we have uh, scabies, we have podoconiosis and the others. Mm. But in addition to, do, to those diseases, we have those uh, others who are, which are transmitted by uh, snake bites, for example, mm. uh, causing env envenomation. We have uh, dog bites causing rabies. And also we have uh, uh, tiniasis from uh, eating uh, pigs, which are not well cooked. Mm. Mm. So you just uh, mentioned some of the neglected tropical diseases found in Rwanda. Mm. Mm. But what are their symptoms and long-term effects? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, normally, their, uh, their symptoms are somehow different but when, let us start by intestinal worms. Mm. When someone is really having intestinal worms, uh, the most common symptom is like he will be feeling, uh, he will feel like he will be having this uh, intestinal pain. Mm -hmm. uh, he may have nausea. Uh, he might, the, the person might have uh, even cough, uh, different symptoms and signs of that disease. But also he may be weak and not even in the classroom, the, 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 the problem of those diseases, people, the kids, are not really performing well in the classes uh, because uh, uh, those intestinal worms took the nutrients that helps to develop their, uh, their brain. They took those nutrients and then uh, the people will really develop this mental retardation, mm. which is really critical uh, to, to, to key our kids. And it's also behind the, the stunting issue that we have uh, here in Rwanda, we, we can see that district having a high burden of intestinal worms mm. and having as well uh, this high stunting rate, mm. which is really critical to, to our country. That's why the government is putting more efforts to eliminate those diseases so that we can at least also alleviate the symptoms and the other consequences mm. of those diseases. Mm. Uh, and for, let's say, for snake bites, you have inflammation, and some people may even uh, go for amputation of their one of their limbs, and uh, for dog bites, we have rabies, which, is, which, can, which do not have any cure or any treatment. 
mm. when it develops. Mm. Yeah, many things, many, many consequences related to those diseases. And the last, lastly, podoconiosis, leg swelling of the, lo the lower limb. Uh, when one is working or in their routine while activities like farming, mm -hmm. they are farming without wearing shoes. Now the part soil particles may enter their skin mm -hmm. and there is inflammation and destruction of the lymphatic system in the lower limb, causing the swelling of the leg. Mm -hmm. And you, you see someone with disability, uh, difficult to, to work, difficult to work for his family, it's very critical. It, it has really a big impact. Mm -hmm. That's why the government is investing in this, uh, those, disease, those diseases so that we can eliminate them by 2030. Mm. Mm. Since we have these diseases, some of these diseases in Rwanda, mm -hmm. what is the current status of these diseases specifically in Rwanda in terms of statistics? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, let's start by the most common ones, mm -hmm. intestinal worms. Mm -hmm. uh, even when we were young kids, uh, we used to have uh, in the countryside some uh, traditional medication when we are feeling bad in, in, in the intestine. Uh, these intestinal hormones are common and we are having 41% of prevalence. I mean, in 100 people, we have 41 which are infected by intestinal hormones. And the, uh, for schistosomiasis, the one transmitting different wetlands mm. uh, or water bodies, we have uh, at least uh, a thousand cells which are endemic to this uh, schistosomiasis. Mm. For podoconiosis as well, we have uh, around uh, 6,000 cases uh, affected by lymphatic, uh, this leg swelling, podoconiosis. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you, you touched on a very important point while you were explaining that the government is deploying efforts mm -hmm. to combat or to prevent these neglected diseases or to eradicate them, why not? Uh, what efforts are being deployed by the government of Rwanda to combat these neglected diseases? Thank you very much for the question. Sure, the government, they are called neglected tropical diseases, but uh, for the side of Rwanda, the government is investing in those diseases. They are no longer neglected. Mm. They have never been neglected in Rwanda. Mm. So the efforts have been made. Mm. Now more investment are being made so that you can reach the country commitment of eliminating them by 2030. Mm. Where those diseases will not be really a public health threat, a public health problem to our, our community. Uh, this means it will be at the, uh, at the threshold, at the minimum threshold possible where they're not really causing harm to the community. Mm. So the government is really investing a lot. Let's start by probably uh, in, uh, treating adults even, mm. treating for intestinal hormones. Now the treatment of adults were not really performed before 2020. Mm. Now in 2021, because we, with the, the survey, the study that have been conducted, we saw Adults are now more afraid than kids. Mm. That normally kids uh, below 16 years were the ones who were used to, to be receiving deworming, um, deworming pills mm. during, at least twice a year mm. during campaigns. Yes. Currently, since 2021, now the government is treating adults as well during maternal child health week campaigns. Mm. So that at least, because they were serving as parasite reserve, transmitting or contaminating kids who were dewormed, who were treated. Therefore, the government is treating now adults. This is one of the investments. Uh, secondary, uh, in terms of uh, podoconiosis, let's say the government have been put, put in place some treatment centers mm. so that people can have access to, to services, mainly in terms of uh, treating those cases which in the past they were not really treated uh, because the services were not really present in health facilities. Mm. Uh, apart of procuring drugs, uh, for those adult community. We are also investing in water sanitation hygiene. Mm. I think uh, the water access is now at a good level. The same with uh, sanitation, I mean toilets, latrines, are really improving, which means the government is investing a lot to have those diseases eliminated. Mm. The same with other diseases like, like dog bites, snake bites. So that is the part of the government mm -hmm. and, and those all efforts but what is the contribution of residents, or what should residents do to prevent those neglected diseases? Great, good question as well. Because as, as the residents of, uh, of some communities, different villages, we have a great role to play. It's mainly our part. Mm. The elimination cannot be possible without residents' contribution. Mm. Number one, uh, is the, the, the individual or the person to, to wash his hands, mm. uh, to regularly use the toilet, 
even prevent some poor sanitation uh, practices, uh, like open defecation. It's individual people, residents, to prevent any of the poor behavior or bad behavior, which are already contributing to the transmission of those diseases. Mm. Uh, let's say for dog bites, it's the, the individual person, the, indiv the owner of the dogs, mm. who need to vaccinate them so that he prevents or she prevents the transmission of rabies. Uh, let's say for snake bites, mm. normally those who are farming in, a, in a, let's say, in areas where we have snakes, need to have preventive measures, like having uh, boots and the other protective equipment so that they cannot really get uh, beaten by, by snakes. Mm. So I think uh, residents individually has a great role to play. Mm. First of all, get to know that those diseases, how they are transmitted, and then what is their role now to, pre to prevent those diseases. And if now infected, what would be the next steps mainly in terms of seeking care because all the facilities in Rwanda and the hospitals are providing services to those people who are affected. Now, individual people, everyone, every Rwandan should really seek care to the health facilities to even have checkup, regular checkup mm -hmm. of intestinal homes, of Belizea and other entities mm -hmm. so that at least we can reach the country commitment of eliminating them by 2030. Mm. Mm. We have come to the end of today's health segment. Thank you for sharing your insights and thank you for dedicating your time. Thank you very much. Now to sports matters, on Saturday in collaboration with the Rwandan Karate Federation and the Embassy of Japan in Rwanda, the Ambassador's Cup competition took place. This event was distinctive in that it exclusively featured team participation, whereas in previous rounds, individual players had participated. This competition started in 2016 and was last held in 2019 at Notre Dame des Anges School in Gasabo District. On its sixth occasion, it had been been attended by teams of men and women who are over 18 years old in kumite fighting and 16 years old in kata showing. In kumite category 18 teams registered for the men's division while nine teams participated in the women's division. For kata 14 men's team and women, eight women's team were registered. Those who are part of the Great Warriors team of Yikondo in Chichuchiro district won the competition and they expressed their joy at attaining success in the karate competition and note that their satisfaction with the level of skill they have achieved. <laughs> Everyone comes here prepared to the point where you think that no one will take the first place in the competition besides you. But there is also pressure because of the competition. However, whatever we have achieved, we are grateful to God. And after this, we will learn from the weaknesses noticed and do better next time. Karate helps us to meet with people and it's not about fighting. Instead, it's an ambient atmosphere. Yongabo Damia, the president of Rwanda Karate Federation, points out that this competition is one of the ways to strengthen the relationship between Rwanda and Japan. Karate is a game that embodies various values. And by this story, we end tonight's bulletin. Thank you for joining us for today's news. Wishing you a wonderful and restful weekend. Take care and until good, uh, next time, goodbye.